Hi, liebe Leute. Heute wird richtig gerockt, denn bei mir sitzen The Theory of a Dead Man. Hey, guys. Hi. Hello. Into the mic, Ty. I got it. The door simply explains it's all that remains. It's no wonder why I have not slept in days. I want to know what's the story behind your band name, Theory of a Dead Man. Theory of a Dead Man. Um, in 2002 is when our first record came out. Uh, it was a self-titled record. Uh, when we got signed to a record deal with uh, our label, uh, I think we were still searching for a band name, Theory of a Dead Man, and that came from a, a song title off our first record. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called The Last Song um, back then, and we changed the name of the song for some odd reason. And so we had this very interesting, thought-provoking title that we didn't know what to do with, so we decided to call our band that, Theory of a Dead Man. Okay. <laughs> so a song title. <laughs> <laughs> um, your first record in 2002, your last in 2008, that's two years ago, when will you release a new one? 2012. <laughs> no, what is it right now, 2010? 2011. 2010 maybe, who knows? 2018. No. <laughs> I don't know. This is our last tour of this record. We've been on the road for over two years, so uh, we're going to go back and uh, work on a new record after this tour. But so hard to believe By the way You left without saying goodbye to me Now that you're gone away What's the strangest thing that happens on tour yet? On uh, tour? Well, you mean as in an incident that may maybe have has occurred yeah. to us? Do you want to tell the story? I'll, I'll tell. I don't know how, <laughs> if we're allowed to, but uh, <laughs> we were doing a meet and greet, signing a bunch of stuff for a bunch of people at a festival, and uh, a woman came up and was we were signing her stuff, and she was wearing like a bikini. And then uh, out of the blue, she says, so you have something to tell your friends back home. And she pulled her boob out and started shooting milk oh. out of her, right in front of us. And we were all like, oh, my God. And the, there was a kid beside her that was getting hit by it. And he's like, what the hell? It was pretty. It was the strangest thing I've ever seen. It was very strange. It was a while since, since then that I've been able to have a latte. <laughs> you know, a coffee latte. Latte. That, that joke translates. That's good. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's... Um, okay. You, um, might have to, you might have to edit that out of the show. I don't know. Hey, she asked, what was this? Yeah, that's the know? strange <laughs> Yeah, it's a cool story. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what do you miss the most when you're on tour? So, I don't know. I guess uh, just probably miss family and friends and being able to spend time I with them. I think you just miss having somewhat of a normal life. You know, when I go home, all my, like you say, all my friends are having babies and they all get these crazy normal lives and we've got this crazy life that takes us away all the time. Every time I go home, there's new street lights and, and uh, you know, new s super malls and stuff like that. Everything changes every time we go away. It's not like before You've left nothing here It's all disappeared It hurts me to see that we've been alive. Would it have hurt you to try? By the way, the last record is called Scars and Souvenirs. And on this record, the lyrics are a bit more sensitive like on the records before and i've yeah. read that the rolling stones as uh, rolling stone magazine called you tyler a callous bastard yeah. before and that's true did this fact made you change or was it more about personal circumstances uh well i definitely don't do anything for rolling stone magazine <laughs> <laughs> uh, no i think that really um 
A turning point was, uh, you know, our first record, we were a lot younger, and I think there was a lot more angst, a lot more heavy rock, which Europeans love. But uh, I think over time, with the songwriting, the lyrics for me, it was, uh, I felt a lot more comfortable writing how I felt, and if I was sad or I was in love, I could write a song about that. So there's a lot of that kind of material on Scars and Souvenirs, and the reaction has been so much greater than maybe compared to our first record, where there was a lot of the same themes on every song. So uh, it definitely wasn't Rolling Stone, I think it was just more about being more comfortable with my songwriting, I think. Nevertheless, your, your music videos, the women are mostly pretty bad. Some of it is, yeah. <laughs> And so happy the girl um, puts you into her trunk with a shovel and in girlfriend right. she's a stripper and Which is loves great. cocks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in Not Meant to Be you sing, it's, I'm sorry, it's never enough to say, I'm sorry, it's never enough to say, I care. Like right. women just want too much. So what exactly. about your connection or your relationship to women? Um, well, I think that th for me that se seems to have always been an ongoing theme. Um, maybe it's just more frustration in me <laughs> but the great thing about it is that a lot of people can relate to that more than anything else a lot of people like to hear love songs we definitely have a lot of uh, songs on our record that aren't breakup songs like uh, Wait For Me or All Or Nothing or Got It Made but uh, it seems to be the songs like Not Meant To Be and So Happy and Bad Girlfriend uh, for some reason especially with Uh, North Americans, uh, they really like to relate to that kind of stuff. The breakups and the, you know, hating your job. And I, I think it's almost therapeutic to, you know, if you're in a bad mood or if you're sad to hear a song that's about that. You know what I'm saying? the song not meant to be I have to confess that it's for me it sounds a bit like Nickelback what I'm sorry but um, you have a special relationship to Chad Kruger that it is very yeah. special <laughs> uh, it's sexual almost in nature oh, oh. <laughs> nine nine we've been good friends with him for years now uh, met him probably back in uh, around 2000 2001 uh, And they were back then. They were um, they really hadn't you know made it big yet. This was before they kind of exploded. And uh, he wanted to start his own record label, and uh, we gave him a demo of our music, and he really liked it and said, "Okay, I want to start my own label, and I want to help you guys, you know, get a record deal and, and get things started." And he did just that, and he uh, produced our first record, and we went on and excelled and toured and and uh, learned a lot and, and uh, you know we still talk once in a while but he's always busy and we rarely ever are in the same town at the same time and uh, he's been stealing our music ever since <laughs> <laughs> stop stealing our music <laughs> okay um, last question becoming a famous rock star is a very big dream of many many people for you it has come true is there another dream you want to fulfill in the future for me I'd love to become No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, hmm. That smells good. Um, I don't really know. I think that, uh, you know, music used to always be like a hobby, just like something you do for fun. And then when you start doing it professionally in a way, you know, I think you do start opening yourselves up to doing something different. But, you know, doing this takes up so much of your time. I, I don't know that... Uh, I've realized any other dreams yet. I think that maybe when this all comes to an end, I'll try to figure it out, be a race car driver, astronaut, uh, I don't know yet, bullfighter. Well, you should definitely look into something other than music. <laughs> <laughs> bullfighter would be great. Yeah, Toro, Toro. Okay, time is up. Thank you very much for the Thank interview. Thank you. Have fun tonight. Thank you. And I say, tschüss, and bis zum nächsten Mal. Auf Wiedersehen.